you cool cats, this is Mina, and welcome back to another episode of Danganronpa Ultra Despair Girls. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to say, uh, I've really started to work on my mobile channel, which I'm going to start including in the links below. So if you guys have any interest at all in mobile games, or, uh, just maybe want to see something else from me, uh, that channel is now underway. And, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm not gonna bring this up in any other episode. I'm just letting you guys know now. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. Chapter 4. The Way We Live. I beg of you, please, just leave this city. Where did this come from? Oh, I knew this would happen. <laughs> What's on your face? In order for the new society of children to be calm and peaceful, I need to create paradise. Everyone has high expectations of me. I cannot fail. So please, get out of our town. But, but, uh... Oh, Maru, don't be tricked. You don't have to actually accept that offer. No, this is not an offer. It's an honest request. Please, I'm begging you. Please leave. H hey, I wouldn't trust a kid, even if he's kneeling on the ground. He's obviously tricking us. I don't know. I think he means it. I do not intend to trick you. I'm serious. I don't think, I don't think he's like Monica. I think he, Monica seems like completely crazy. I think this kid actually does like, he has like these like higher ideals or whatever. Like he's got like these grand ideals for kids and it doesn't, at least that's what it seems. Cause whenever he's like quibbled with the rest of the um, team, he seems almost like, I don't want to say like an adult, but he, he does act more adultish. <laughs> and now, you are free. But Nagisa, if you do this, you're gonna make Monica super sad! I know that, but it has to be done. Monica has high expectations of me. I'm sure she'll understand. Ah, uh, she don't. <laughs> I I don't think Kodoko agrees with that. <laughs> I'll take you to the secret passageway. It's the only way to get out of town. I can guarantee your safety until you reach it. The Monokumas won't attack with me here. Come on, let's go. Hey, I told you to wait. What? Do you have another objection? Do I? Um... Oh, oh, Maru, are you really okay with this? Huh? I mean... I mean, what reason would she have to be not okay with this? Maybe... Maybe Toko thinks that if... Kumaru leaves the city, Yakuya can't be saved? Or something? Of course she is. This is what she wanted all this time. I, I wasn't talking to you. I'm asking Amaru. She wants to leave this town. Why are you getting in her way? You're on the same side, right? Then you should respect her feelings. Her feelings? Sh shut up. You have no right to say that going to be all right. I will personally guide you to the secret passageway. No need to worry. Let's go. Nagisa! Don't follow us. But, but... You don't want Monica to hate you, do you?
Is, what is she gonna do? Is she gonna tattle to Monica? Let's go. The secret passageway is this way. This way. All right, hold on. We need to turn around. That first. kid. He looks so normal. <gasps> running like that. How does a non-normal kid run? Cool. Start off on the right foot by not missing anything. Okay, any sparklies? Ha, uh, sparkle. About the children at night. There's only one thing I could tell for sure about taking the night shift as lookout. The children are all wearing those idiotic helmets. None of them look like they're sleeping, and I've never seen them eat either. Are they really human children? Isn't it possible that they're just mechanical dolls like Monokumas? Well, regardless, whether they're humans or robots, they're devils in our eyes. And the only difference is what liquid they bleed when we run them over. This way! Follow me closely! Are the Monokumas going to attack him? Hold on! Why are you attacking me? by the Monokumas. I don't know either. Dance! Stop it! Okay, can I... wouldn't attack us if you were here. This is... strange. What in the world is this? Hey, you weren't lying when you said you wouldn't trick us, right? Did, uh... Did Nagito report this to, uh... Monica? Of course! If I wanted to deceive you, I would not have removed your wristband. Then... They must have found out you betrayed them. Betrayal? Me? No, that's wrong! I'm no traitor. I am the leader of the Warriors of Hope. I care about making Paradise more than anybody. The reason I'm letting you guys go is because I care so much. It appears your allies aren't taking it that way. <sighs> I'm sure she'd understand if I explained it to her properly. Monica has such high expectations. Yeah, keep on saying that, Mr. Genius Grade Schooler. Did the coins go away? Oh, there they are. Oh, thank goodness. Yay. Let's go. Is there bodies everywhere? I'm getting sick of this. I don't see any sparkles. Right. I'm trying not to miss anything. This this place is actually like it's so wide open and it's got so many twists and the turns. secret passageway is this way. I feel like I'm gonna be missing something. <laughs> I'm a 
warrior of hope. I'm your master. All right. All right. Oh my god. go that way, but... Aha! The conductor's 48 hours. Roriko Anaka, famous as the genius conductor, is regarded by the world as perfect, talented, extraordinary, and beautiful. However, she has a secret that she keeps from them all. The pinnacle of lyrical sexual prose. A fluttering melody of suffering and sadism. This novel seems pretty intense. Interesting? So vulgar. Even with the S&M bits, it's beneath me. It's probably just some sloppily written wish fulfillment fanfiction garbage. <laughs> I'm sure it's not going to be that bad. No, it's definitely going to be that bad. I feel a lack of talent from here. A book with a title this bad has just ha just has to be just as bad on the inside. Um. Well, if the ultimate writing prodigy says it, I'm sure it's true. Ugh. A tasty subject like S and M boiled down to this crap. A true masochist like me would do better. How did this even get published? We must really be getting desperate to put this out. Which reminds me... Hey, as a... Um, true masochist, have you ever had that kind of experience? What, like being tied up or suspended? There's no way I do such indecent things. <laughs> but then how do you know you're a masochist if you've never done that stuff before? Isn't that like someone saying they love cigarettes, but they never smoked before? <laughs> you underestimate my imagination. Every spare moment I'm being stepped on, tied up, suspended by my master. In my head. <laughs> you sound pretty proud about that. But... But that reminds me, one time I really was tied up and suspended. Could it be? Huh? By Biakia? No. No. I don't even remember his name now. It was when I was in the third grade. Someone's lunch money got stolen. It somehow ended up in my desk. My classmates thought I did it, so they tied me up in the jungle gym with the garden hose. So cool. That's horrible. You're right. At the time, I felt a tingling sensation, but I'm sure that's not related. No, that definitely sounds like a formative experience. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was hidden over there. Oh, okay. so I feel good finding something over there. <laughs> I always feel weird when I don't find a sparkly when I'm when I feel like I should have. Makes me think that I'm missing stuff. This way. You You're weren't. seriously trusting a guy like that? I'm sure he's planning to betray you. You... You think so? No, I don't think he's planning to betray us. I think... He he has really strong feelings towards the whole, like, building a paradise for children. And I think he's... Hey! Where are you going? I'm checking for so Sparky. Calm your... Calm your little horns. Um. Please give me bullets. Not the bullets that I want. 
Um, anyways, I really believe that he actually thinks of this looks like a fighting area for sure. I think I might use Toko for it. Go. The secret passageway is this way. Okay, but I really feel like I should have seen something. So, so cruel. This is too cruel. I won't look, but even if I don't see it, I can pretty much figure out what happened. You really don't feel anything seeing this? These people are demons, our enemies. That's not what she asked. You said it before, right? It's because you're afraid of adults? Yeah, that's right. We can't help but be terrified around adults. If the adults just didn't exist, we could live peacefully. Why are you so afraid of adults? We Warriors of Hope are classmates in the Hope Speak Elementary program. We were in the classroom where they put all the troublemakers. But I resent it being called a troublemaker. It makes it sound as if we ourselves were the cause of the trouble. But that's not right. Our troubles were created by adults. By our parents. They say kids can't pick their parents. Well, we were the unluckiest ones of all. My parents were, without exaggeration, the worst. Like demons. My parents raised me like they were leveling me up in some game. They didn't oh treat God. me like a person. They probably even forgot I was their child. From morning till night, study, study, study. When I got sleepy, analeptics. Oh my God. Even if I faint, HP is fully restored with a handy IV in my arm. Three to four days straight. Oh my God. And if I showed even the slightest resistance, They'd use items to neuter my spirit. Jesus. Okay. So, holy hoops. Obviously, Masaru's father was a piece of garbage. And I don't know what to think about Jotaro's parents. Because they seem to be like work working parents who just didn't give him attention if they forced him to wear that mask then i don't know what to say there's the, that's that's just kind of like why and then like obviously kotoko's parent mother mother at least peace well no father because she also mentioned how her father was cheating on her whatever so both of them are sacks of garbage too but this is like, this is like even worse in a sense. Not like, I want to put down like all that other stuff, but this one's like, this one's so freaking deliberate. All right, while I was editing this episode, I listened to this part and it doesn't exactly explain how I felt properly about this scene. What I was trying to get at, the reason why this one felt really bad to me is because it was more of an intimate, personal assault that they were doing on the child, whereas the other ones were either dismissive or someone else was the one causing the action, or in the case of the drunken father, he's not aware and actively doing it. It doesn't make any of those situations less bad, because they're all bad, it, it, especially Kodoko's is really bad to me, but this one's more of like 
I guess it's like the analogy of poison versus a stabbing when you kill someone. Whereas one of them's kind of like you don't feel that close intimate atta attachment when you're doing it. Whereas the other one's very, very brutal and and you are participating much, much more closely. Again, I don't think any in any situation is, oh, it's good that this happened to them instead of that, because that's a really terrible thing to say. I've always agreed with that thought process that there is no good bad thing to happen it's it's just bad and i'd rather not out like like weigh someone's sins versus another person's sins and say you should cheer up because at least this didn't happen to you that's a terrible thing to say so uh they're all bad situations i just found this one to be kind of despicable in the sense that the parents were actively doing it hopefully that makes sense and hopefully you guys don't get mad at me treating this situation di too much differently from the other ones. It was just a reaction that I was like, oh, the parent is actually doing it actively. So, yeah. But it's, it's upsetting. And by doing so, as long as they steadily racked up XP, I'd level up to their expectations. And it wasn't just at home. I received the same expectations at school as well. My father was a teacher at our school. He was a researcher of children's talent. He used his own son to research the growth of a child's talent. He wanted to see what the growth curve would be like if he pushed a child to the breaking point. What? Again, I'm not saying anything about the other parents being not as bad, but this is like... This is ridiculous. Isn't that funny? I was the subject of such an amusing experiment. It's not funny at all. But even with all that, I was still better off than the others. You saw Monica's legs, right? That was done to her by her family. That's what I thought. Her father and older brother were jealous of her talent. And that's how she ended up like that. That's horrible. Jealous of what talent? Homeroom? This is a terrible talent. Because we had talent. Because we were superior. We were treated like we were in hell. But during it all, we didn't hold a grudge against our parents. We accepted how we were treated. Because we weren't aware that it was okay to hate our parents. We trusted the common knowledge that kids must love their parents. So we didn't fight it. Instead, we bonded over our struggle. And those discussions led us to the same conclusion. We had to escape from the horrifying world that made us suffer. We were desperate to run away from our scary parents, scary adults, the whole scary world. I know, I know there are people out there that have, like, experiences that are like this, in a sense. Maybe not as intense, or maybe they are as intense. And all I can say is, is you kind of have to keep that, that scary, that scary amount of hope inside you that you don't want to believe in, that things get better, but holding on to that, that that feeling of things getting better and, and it's really hard to when everything around you doesn't seem that way but holding on to that feeling that things will get better and that you have to kind of carve out your own destiny when you're able to and I know it's gotta it sounds like it sounds so stupid that you have to like hang on for so long but if you can't get help from somewhere else um, just believing that one day you can escape all of the, the dark things happening and finding a better place. Because I, I, I truly believe there are many ways to get out of something other than just ending your life. Um, also, nice attention to detail, and this sounds silly, but uh, their, their jackets, um, the way they're buttoned, You'll notice that the girls' buttons go a different way than the guys. And we thought there was only one way out. But 
That's when it happened. There was someone who taught us to have courage. To fight back instead of running away. That was Big Sis Junko. <clears throat> Big Sis Junko told us how. If you don't want it, give it to me. She wanted the thing we were going to dispose of. Our lives. You know what's really sad is that, like... <clears throat> I think a lot of times when people are um, depressed or hate themselves or they, uh, they're just in, like, a really dark place, a, a lot of times... I, I know the advice I gave is just like, you know, you gotta learn to, to love yourself and and kind of um, pull through on it. But it's really, 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 really hard to do that when if if you see yourself as like such a negative and bad thing, it's really hard to see the the, the good things in yourself. Which is why it's always helpful to have someone someone else who. Um, who can say that they love you or, or love the parts about you or, or whatever. And, and usually it's, it's comforting to have like your parents do that because that's what they should do. In, in the case of like these kids, they're in like a dark place and they don't have that, that um, emotional parental support. And, and uh, unfortunately it's, it seems that Junko is taking advantage of that in the worst way possible. And um, yeah, I mean, for me, when I was in a when I was in a pretty dark place, um, it was actually an anime I started watching that really, really helped me, and it's called Fruits Basket. Um, it sounds crazy, but what I took away from that was a a very motherly sort of feeling from one of the characters who really got down to the level and the the struggles and the difficulties of things and said the said the words that I really wanted to hear and said the things that I really wanted to to understand because I I was really embarrassed that I was um I was really embarrassed that I was so depressed and I and I didn't know how to shake myself from it and I didn't know what to do about it and I was just kind of looking at myself going like why are you depressed this is so embarrassing and and you didn't want to tell anyone which was the, the worst part of depression is that you don't tell people and you need to but you don't want to admit it yourself and I didn't even realize that those were the thoughts that were going in my head at the time but when I got to a, a couple of the episodes of Fruits Basket one of the characters really really spoke out on some of the difficulties that I was having and having a character just establish what was wrong with me and, and really just tried to like help me along it really 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 helped me move through that so I guess if there's anything you could take away from what I'm saying right now is just um, if, if, if you feel like something's wrong with you please seek out some sort of help and and it doesn't matter where it comes from and there's no shame in and needing help, but yeah. <clears throat> I feel like I'm, I'm done doing a PSA. We'll <laughs> move on. And so, Big Sis Junko abducted us. Our disappearance didn't make much news. This was around the time the incident was growing. Ever since then, the days have been so much fun. Big Sis Junko showered her possessions with love and affection. She gave us not only love, but a dream as well. The dream of creating a children's paradise. Where the we also learned from Big Sis Junko, the beliefs required to build that dream. The belief that adults are demons. It was as if we saw the light. Thanks to her, we finally realized. The common knowledge we had known up until then were lies adults created for their own benefit. Wow, she's like... She's good at brainwashing people and take advantage of, and taking advantage of someone who's in a weak place. Children cannot defy their parents. Everyone must get along. Violence can never bring peace. To destroy the world based on such lies, we decided to fight against the adults. 
as far as I remember. The first adult we defeated was a random person we didn't even know. We learned that kids can kill adults if they wanted to, and we were encouraged. From there, we leveled ourselves up by killing demons. Big Sis Junko was so pleased. Just the idea of a child killing an adult is despair-inducing. It's just insane. Just as I expected. You guys were just tools to her. She was using you. The way she took you in, it's no different than a cult. Yeah. Cults will actively go after people who are who are in a weak place and then basically go in and replace those those weaknesses with their own ideals. You bring in the weak people and attach them to your own dream. The revolution you're talking about? It's all just another piece of despair to her. You guys were completely deceived by Junko and Ashima. And what's wrong with that? Did I not tell you that we are her possessions? We would rather her take advantage of us than horrible adults. Sounds like it's too late. Say what you like. Big Sis Junko gave us hope. That's the truth. And because of that hope, we were able to defeat the demon boss. Demon boss? Their parents? Our parents. Yeah. You killed your parents? Why, why wouldn't they? That was a special battle that can only be fought once. That made us level up even further. From there, Operation Children's Paradise began, and we started freeing other children. By doing so, the advance of the Warriors of Hope seemed unstoppable, but... Just when things were going so well, Big Sis Junko died. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm just like... When she died, and right we now. lost our guide, we didn't know what to do. But... Monica didn't despair. All we gotta do is fulfill the hopeful dream Big Sis Junko gave us. We shouldn't give up. We can't abandon hope. At that moment, Monica looked just like Big Sis Junko in our eyes. Things that didn't matter vanished, and we felt ourselves rising up again. So does, like, Monica believe in true despair just like Junko does? And that's why she wanted to create a world where... The kids and adults were fighting to continue on Junko's legacy somehow. Come to think of it, that moment, that was the real beginning of the revolution. And this time around, I swore an oath. We the survivors will fulfill the dream and prove how amazing Big Sis Junko is. We would leave lies like education and love for family in the past and create paradise. That is our hope. You guys, you really don't understand that you're doing something very wrong. I, I think they understand that they're wrong. I, I think they just don't care. Justice and evil. These are beliefs that adults have defined, are they not? First off, Pure evil simply does not exist. In all evil, there is something good. That is actually true. What he's saying, evil, pure evil does not, it just doesn't exist. Because all it is is two sides. It, evil only looks evil from the side that's not on yours. Um, I know that sounds crazy, but it's, it's actually... It's actually true. So, because <clears throat> in in if you were the protagonist, for example, if if you were Nagisa and you were like in true belief that your your side is the absolute right, 
then everything that was going against your ideals is the wrong thing and they would be considered the evil things. Whereas we're from what we would call the most conventional of like, this is the right side from the point of view of Kamaru and, and Toko, we see as their side as being nuts and crazy. <clears throat> um, yeah, so... And in the same way, justice always hurts someone. There is no pure justice either. <laughs> Are we really gonna stand around waxing philosophical <laughs> with some little brat? We might be. I want to know why you guys chose Toa City. And not only that, how did you guys get that army of Monokumas? The one who chose the city and prepared our Monokumas was Monica. Isn't she amazing? She created them with her special magic. She created them? What? Magic? Don't take any of this seriously. It's just some kid talking. Basically, Monica's the mastermind, and to save Master, I gotta deal with her. Monica is our princess. I will never allow that. H hey! Earlier, you said that there is no such thing as pure justice or evil. But even if that's true, a dream that requires you to hurt someone, I think it's wrong. After all this time, still saying something so naive. Yeah, that is a bit naive. Cause yeah, yeah, I get that you would want to have a have it so that way you never hurt anyone. But in, in inevitably, you're going to hurt someone no matter what you do. <clears throat> like we're going around and hurting the kids' dreams by by what what we're doing. So that like the logic there. It's impossible. It seems as though we really don't have much in common. I was right to ask you to leave. So let's go already. <clears throat> the secret passageway is right up ahead. All right. Hmm. So I think I've... I've been talking a lot, and this episode is going to end up being a bit longer than my other one, just because of all the chitter-chattering I've done. Um, so I'm going to let this episode be this long without chopping it up. Um, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, thanks a lot to all the patrons that are supporting me. I know I haven't said that recently, and uh, if you're interested in mobile games, go ahead and check out the link below in, my, in the <laughs> details below. Thank you. See you guys later. Bye!